Hello, hello, friends, and welcome into episode six of the Cold Case Cafe. I am your host, Mark, and our co-host, Paulina, is missing this week. Not actually missing, but she is out of town. She will be back, obviously, in the future at some point, but we'll have our own fun for this week. The show must go on. The cases must get covered, but no coffee today. Sad part. And we'll miss Paulina, of course, as well, but whatever. In any case... For you guys today, I have one of the most viral disappearances in the past few years. Clips, and there are clips of this disappearance online, have gathered 15, 20, 25 million views. And what started off as a vacation with a few friends in the summer of 2014 ended in perhaps the most viral missing persons case in recent years. Today, we're discussing the disappearance of Lars Matank. Our case today starts on June 30th, 2014. 28-year-old Lars Matank travels to Varna, Bulgaria with five of his friends. They're going to spend one week at the Golden Sands Resort, which is north of Varna, but not too far away at all. And what this is, it's pretty much a seaside resort on the Black Sea. And this part of Europe is particularly popular for younger tourists since it's a cheaper alternative to some of the more expensive spots with beachfronts like Italy and France and Spain. It's also beautiful in its own right, but this is just the more popular with a younger crowd from Western Europe. The first week or so of the trip, Lars and his friends have a really good time. They relax on the beach, they swim in a pool, they play some soccer. They go clubbing, they go to some bars, some restaurants, all your typical vacation stuff. Nothing happens at all, really, of note. But on July 6th, 2014, and this is the day before they were supposed to leave and head back to Germany, Lars and his friends go out in the bar in Varna. Now, keep in mind, it's 2014, summer, the World Cup is going on. And this is the biggest event currently taking place in the world. Obviously, whenever the World Cup's on, the whole world's watching. So, Lars and his friends... They go to a bar, they're watching a semifinal game of the World Cup, and they're having a good time until they run into a group of German tourists. And Lars and his friends are also Germans. Initially, they just start talking, but at some point in their conversation, Lars starts arguing with this other group of German tourists. And what they were arguing about was actually, <laughs> it's kind of funny in Europe, Soccer is is such a, or football if you call that in, in your part of the world, it's such a big part of life. And, you know, if you're from the U.S., we have the NFL, we have football. And if you're a football fan, like I'm a Bears fan, I don't like Packers fans, but I'm not arguing with Packers fans at a bar or on the street if I see them. In Europe, it's totally different. Like soccer is a religion. And if you support one team, the fans of the other team are your bitter enemies, regardless of who they are. So I could understand this argument. And Lars was a fan of, Werner Bremen, which is a pretty popular but smaller team in Germany. And the other tourists were fans of Bayern Munich, which is like the biggest team. It's like the Dallas Cowboys of German soccer. The argument really starts to ramp up, and Lars is about to actually fight these guys. Like, it's getting pretty serious. His friends kind of see what's going on, and Lars kind of wants to get out of that situation as well. So they leave the bar, and they're just walking down the street in Varna. It's already past midnight. It's pretty late. Lars actually separates from his friends outside of a restaurant and his friends head back to the hotel. They don't really know where Lars goes after this. They wait up for him a little bit. They go to bed. Lars doesn't come back until the following morning. And when he comes back, he's in like really bad shape. He literally looks like he got beat up. He's bleeding. His head hurts. He actually tells his friends that he got beat up by four men who were hired by that group of tourists that he got into an argument the night before. So Lars goes to the hospital, he gets checked out, and doctors tell him that he has an injury to his jaw and also a ruptured 
eardrum, which obviously is pretty serious. So they prescribe him some antibiotics and he tells him, hey, I got to fly home later on today. They tell him you probably can't get on a flight right now with a ruptured eardrum. It's not safe. Obviously, there's a change in pressure when you're flying, which affects your eardrum. Lars's friends actually offer to stay with him. They were all supposed to fly back home on this day, July 7th. But Lars just tells him, hey guys, you you head back. I'll stick around here for a day or two, rest up, and then I'll meet you guys at home. So they all check out of the Golden Sands Resort. His friends go to the airport. They fly back home to Germany. And Lars checks into a hotel called the Hotel Color Varna, which is right next to the airport. So his plan at this point is pretty much just to hang out there for a day or two, rest up, and then when he's good to go, he'll just fly home. I mean, he's literally staying a stone's throw away from the airport. But this is when our case takes a very bizarre turn. After Lars checks into the airport, he calls his mom and he's whispering. He tells her that there are people trying to kill and rob him and that she should cancel all of his credit cards. The CCTV cameras in the hotel also pick up Lars pacing up and down the halls. He's like looking out windows. He's hiding in an elevator. He's acting totally paranoid. At 1 a.m. on July 8th, so this is hours after he checks in, the CCTV cameras pick up Lars leaving the hotel and then randomly coming back an hour later. It's unknown exactly where he went or what he did in this hour, but like we said, he's just acting completely strange and freaked out. The following morning, he calls his mom again and he tells her the people that are after him are getting closer. He has a flight booked back to Germany on the same day, July 8th. So he packs his stuff up. He checks out of the hotel. He heads to the Varna airport. Before he can get on the flight, he actually goes to the airport doctor, Dr. Costa Kostov, just to get checked out and make sure his ear is safe to fly. There's actually a video of Lars walking in to the airport with his stuff. So he goes to the doctor's office. Dr. Kostov checks his ear. He tells him his ear looks fine. He could fly back home. Lars then asks the doctor about those antibiotics that he has prescribed. And at this exact moment, a construction worker enters the doctor's office. And this isn't totally random. The airport was undergoing some construction at the time. So the worker was just walking in to either check some work or whatever the case may be. He just walked in pretty much doing his job. Lars begins to tremble immediately. He gets up and he yells, quote, I don't want to die here. I have to get out of here, unquote, and sprints out of the doctor's office. He leaves all his luggage behind. He leaves his wallet, his cell phone, his passport. He then sprints out of the airport terminal. He's sprinting. This isn't like a light jog. I have to get out of here. He's sprinting. He sprints out of the airport itself. He climbs a fence. He sprints into the direction of a forest. And do you remember how we mentioned that this case is one of the most viral cases in recent years? Well, the reason for that is Lars running out of the airport was captured on CCTV footage. It's been viewed on YouTube, TikTok, millions and millions and millions of times. And this is the last time that Lars was ever seen. Now let's get into Lars's background a little bit. So Lars was born on February 9th, 1986 in Berlin, Germany, and he grew up in Itzeho, Germany, and he lived there his whole entire life. He worked at a power plant. He had a lot of close friends. He had a girlfriend. He was very close with his parents, and he was described as a just a pretty normal person, pretty nice guy. Investigators immediately interview Lars's friends just to see if they can get any clues as to where Lars may have gone. So Lars's friends tell him, hey, he was acting pretty normal all the way up until that fight. One of his friends said that he didn't really eat too much throughout the trip. He ate some soup and salad and stuff like that. But he wasn't really, you know, when you go on vacation, you, at least I do, I eat a ton. But it looks like he just did not eat much, which I guess could be abnormal, but not necessarily. His friends didn't really mention any other abnormal behavior at all. They said he was in a pretty good mood the whole time. They were having fun up until that fight. Everything was okay. Dr. Kostov, the airport doctor, also said that Lars seemed a little bit nervous and he was acting a little bit erratic. And I couldn't find if this was before or after that construction worker walked in, but nonetheless, he said that Lars seemed a little bit nervous. Now, before we get into our theories, 
guys. Let's let's talk about the evidence we have in this case so far. So we have Lars. He travels to Bulgaria with some friends. The first six days or so, totally normal on the vacation. Nothing really happens. He gets into a fight. He obviously sustains a head injury. His eardrums burst. After this, he starts exhibiting paranoia. He thinks someone's after him. He's just trying to get home, obviously. He goes to the airport. He gets checked out. He's about to fly home in a matter of hours, and that construction worker walks in. He was obviously freaked out by the construction worker, sprints out of the airport into the forest, never seen again. That's pretty much all we have. We obviously have the conversation with his mom as well, but that's kind of all lumped into what we said right there, him being paranoid and him thinking someone's after him. Now, also, there is no definitive agreement among experts and family members as to the cause of Lars' behavior and exactly what happened to him after he ran to the forest. But with that being said, let's head into our theories. Theory number one. So Lars' mom, alongside some German and Bulgarian doctors, think that Lars' behavior was a result of a rare side effect of the antibiotic that he was prescribed, which is called Cefprazil. In very rare cases, this antibiotic could actually induce psychotic effects, including paranoia and hallucinations. Okay, but Dr. Kostov said that Lars didn't even take the antibiotics and that he didn't even fill out his prescription. Now, if that's true, obviously this theory is impossible. But in my research, I really couldn't find a definitive source stating whether he definitely took or did not take those antibiotics. So this theory is a little bit up in the air. If he did take them, it could be possible. If he didn't, obviously impossible. Theory number two. This is a very popular theory. A lot of people think that Lars had an onset of a mental illness for which he did not have any prior symptoms of, or at least that he didn't tell anyone that he had any symptoms of. And this mental illness was undiagnosed. And at this very moment, it kind of surfaced and caused Lars to act paranoid and then eventually run away into the forest. Lars's mom said that he had no history of mental illness. But a mental breakdown caused by an undiagnosed mental illness is possible, at least in my research. And I'm not a mental health expert whatsoever. I think I spent more time researching mental health in this case than the actual case itself. But it is possible, especially in your late 20s, to have an onset of these symptoms of a mental health disorder. But the thing with this theory, at least in my opinion, Lars got beat up. He sustained a head injury. So I don't know how likely it is to sustain a pretty dramatic head injury and then have the onset of these of this mental health illness at the same time. And I was actually looking up how much force does it take to rupture an eardrum? And what I found was unless you get slapped in a really specific manner, there's like this thing called like a double slap where you get slapped on both ears and the pressure from that slap kind of messes with the pressure within your ears and you can actually burst both your eardrums or at least one of them by doing by just smacking someone and don't do this but just smacking someone on both ears at the same time like a cupping smack however if you just get punched in the head it's actually fairly uncommon for an eardrum to burst so i did some research on like boxing and like the ufc and if those guys that just get punched and girls they get punched in the head 50 100 150 times by a professional athlete trained to punch as hard as possible how often they get their eardrums burst and it's actually pretty rare even there if you get punched like 50 times it's unlikely that your eardrum is going to get burst it seems to me like lars got hit pretty hard or he got hit in a very specific way or maybe smacked really hard for his eardrum to burst but nonetheless he got roughed up pretty bad in that fight theory number three whoever beat up lars was ultimately responsible for his disappearance. So proponents of this theory think that there were actually people after Lars and they eventually caught up with him either in the forest or somewhere outside of the airport and they either kidnapped him or murdered him, whatever the case may be, and disposed of him after that. Now, I think with this theory, we obviously don't have any concrete evidence 
the only evidence we have with for this is Lars said that he got beat up by four guys that were hired by those German tourists from the bar. But there's no like CCTV footage that we have of this fight or where it happened or who it was. And no one was ever arrested or charged with beating up Lars at all. So we really don't have much in terms of evidence for this theory. I think it's possible, obviously, that they caught up with him for whatever reason. But I mean, I think having an argument at a bar and then hiring someone to beat up a guy and then follow the guy and then murder the guy, that's pretty extreme, especially even for like a soccer argument. And I'm a soccer fan as well, so I've been there. But I think this is still unlikely. I mean, you're not going to hire a group of guys to kill someone just because you've been in arguing with them. I'm sure those guys have been arguing with other people before and I'm... You know, they would have been in jail if they kept murdering people, every single person that they're in an argument with. So I think this theory possible, but unlikely. Theory number four. Now, this theory really does not have much evidence behind it at all. And I don't think it's very likely, but it is one of the more popular theories. So we'll cover it. Some people think that Lars and his friends were in Bulgaria because they were either involved in smuggling or distributing drugs and that they were kidnapped or killed as a result of this. Like we said, there's not really any evidence to support this. This part of Europe does have somewhat of a higher instance of drug-related crimes, but there is not a single shred of evidence that I found, at least, of Lars and his friends being involved in anything of the sort. Now, theory number five, and this is a theory which I think is probably most likely Lars sustained a pretty serious concussion as a result of the concussion Lars exhibited this paranoia which caused him to run off into the forest I did some research in this as well and it is possible when you sustain a concussion for your behavior to change and for you to suffer uh, paranoia it's not one of the leading symptoms of a concussion and it is, from what I've read, somewhat rare. It is possible, though. I think what really happened is Lars and his friends were having a good time. He got into that fight. After that, I mean, if you're in a foreign country, you get beat up. Your eardrum is burst. I'm sure that's super painful. He may have sustained a concussion and whatever other injuries he had. At that point, I mean, you're super freaked out. Your friends left. You're there by yourself. I'm not saying the friends should have stayed or should have left but think about it. you're in a hotel by yourself you got beat up by four random guys even if i wasn't paranoid to that effect of calling my mom and telling her that someone's after me i would still be scared in that situation for sure so i think that's what happened he was really freaked out he wanted to get back home when that construction worker walked in he just lost control ran away into the forest i think that's the most plausible theory out of these five that we covered today i think besides the drug dealing one i think they're all relatively possible and, and with these cases there has to be a scenario obviously that explains what happened but it's just so murky and we have very little details usually when some of this appears they're not caught on camera disappearing but you can literally see lars running away into a forest this case still has such little evidence to actually build a theory around Lars's mom hired a private investigator, and this guy just checked hospital room records for patients without ID. He interviewed some people around Varna, but ultimately he could not find any evidence of where Lars may have gone. Lars did have some experience in fishing, hunting, and also trapping, but a lot of people are skeptical about him being able to survive in very hot weather in Varna in the summer, obviously, of 2014 with no food and water. Lars's mom thinks that it's possible for him to still be alive and for him to have lost his memory and not know who he was. There have been cases in the past with this. I've, I've done a little bit of research of this as well. There have been people that for one reason or another get amnesia and they just don't remember anything about their life at all. Like they forget about their kids. They forget about their significant other, their parents. They no, have no idea who they are. There have also been multiple reported sightings of Lars in other European countries, but none of these have been confirmed. One popular sighting was when a German trucker in 2019 gave a hitchhiker a ride from, well, let's try to pronounce these, 
Dresden to Schildo in Oberhaven, Germany. And the truck driver at the time did not even know who Lars was. He didn't know anything about the case. But later when he learned about the case, he said this, he gave a guy that looked just like Lars a ride. He's, he did say that the guy looked like an older version of Lars and that he had a long beard and long hair and that his eyes looked really tired and that his cheekbones were pretty prominent. Police investigated it, but it didn't lead to any evidence whatsoever as to where Lars may be. Now, what I do with these cases, especially with missing persons cases, I hop on Google Maps and I look at the immediate area surrounding where they disappeared. And when looking at the Varna Airport, there are actually vast forests all around this area. So it's really hard to pinpoint exactly where Lars could have gone. He could have traveled for miles and miles and miles in any direction with these forests. So there really isn't anything conclusive that I could find in terms of formulating a theory of where me, he may have gone. Obviously, if he thought there was someone after him at the airport, he didn't go back to the airport. I was thinking about maybe him. He could have gone back into like downtown Varna or something. But this case was actually very popular in Bulgaria at the time. It was all over the newspapers. It was also popular in Germany. So I think if someone saw him walking around that part of Bulgaria, or if he went back to Germany, he would have been recognized at some point. And no one really could pinpoint exactly where he was, or no one could really substantiate an actual sighting of Lars anywhere. Lars is listed at 180 centimeters, which is 5 feet 11 inches tall. He has dark blonde hair, and he has a scar on his left forearm. If you guys have any information at all that may be useful to police in solving Lars' disappearance, you can call plus 491516137 That's plus 491516137873, which is a number for the investigative agency that's handling this case. Really sad case. It, the thing that really, really gets me about this case is that Lars, if he just went to a separate bar with his friends that night, or if they just did a completely different activity, he probably would have just gone home with his friends on July 7th, and none of this would have happened. So these little things that happen in life, is just, it's just astounding. I mean, just getting into a small argument at a bar kind of butterfly effects into Lars disappearing within a matter of hours, which is just crazy to think about. I really hope this case gets solved. It's been almost 10 years at this point. This summer, it'll be 10 years since Lars disappeared. I think with Lars's mom thinking that he may have lost his memory, I think that's also, you know, it could be possible, but at some point, I think he would have been seen somewhere and hopefully this is the case and, and that he gets reunited with his family. Thank you guys so much for listening. Oh, this sounds so corny every time I say it, but leave us a review. Tell your friends about our podcast if you enjoy it. Follow us on our social media. We're pretty active on TikTok, if that's your thing. If you guys have any cases you'd like us to cover in the future, feel free to drop us a DM. But until then, thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.